writing the book, I, I love everything about it, about, about the process. Mm -hmm. And while I'm doing it, I know that I'm going to miss it when it's finished. Yes. You know, because it's 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 a it, it's one moment in my life that I'll never get back. So mm -hmm. in those two years during the pandemic, even though it was you know it, it was well it's hard work, but you know that's that's fine. That's not a problem. But it's more that you think. Yes, there, there will come a point when this book will be finished and will be in bookshops, which is now. Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I just wanted to find out as my very first question to you. How did you get into Islamic art and Islamic geometric design? Uh, well, I've been doing it for a long time, um, since my 20s. And I was a student in Amsterdam. I was studying Middle Eastern politics. And at some point, I thought it's interesting, but it's not that interesting. You know, I really want to do something positive. I want to be able to, to 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 give something to the world. I wanted to find a big challenge, an impossible dream. And Islamic art had always been on my radar. But then I came across a book on Islamic geometric design, which showed you the result, but not the process. And I, I was fascinated. I thought, well, this is really interesting. You know, this is something that I can put my energy into. It's it's history, it's creativity, it's under-researched. Um, so I made a commitment to that. And and so you you mentioned like so you you're you're from the Netherlands and, and now mm. you're in the UK, you're living in the UK um up north in, in Yorkshire. Um, yeah. What what was that journey like? How did you end up living in Yorkshire and and you do workshops over there as well? The first 10 years in Amsterdam, I taught myself. So it was just me at home with a compass and a ruler, um, just deconstructing in order to reconstruct. And at some point I thought, I have if I really want to get better, I need to get a formal education. So that's why I went to the UK and, 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 and did my formal education there. Um, and then, you know, I met my, my wife, uh, my now wife. She's a doctor. She got a job up north. And I uh, I went along <laughs> basically, <laughs> and it's you know it's it's, it's beautiful up here. It's, it's green hills. It's you know cows and sheep, and it's uh, it's a good place to write books and to do workshops as well. It's very conducive for for an artist, isn't it? Because uh, we we've, we've kind of like had a look, um, like researched um, the area, and it's so green. It's so lovely. It, it, it's beautiful here. It's beautiful, you know, and I think it, it, it's always hard to choose, right? It, it, the grass is always greener on the other side. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I sometimes I miss London because for Islamic art, it, London is much more dynamic than, than, than Yorkshire. But on the other hand, I remember when I lived in London or in Amsterdam as well, you just get very tired from mm. this big city living. And I know um, you mentioned a, li a little bit earlier on, um, you know, when when you were starting, you had you had a compass, you had a ruler, um, but like the design looks quite complicated. Is it a complicated art form, or is it is it quite mm. simple once you've mastered it? There are a few essential principles. Basically, these patterns were traditionally drawn by craftsmen around the world who were not mathematicians. Mm. They were people who made things and the tools that they worked with were a compass and a ruler. So in principle, any pattern, any composition, even very complex one, you can construct with a compass and a ruler. You know, the more complex ones are more difficult to draw, but the, the same principle applies. So I try to teach it in a way that doesn't make it complicated because I know also that when you talk about Islamic geometric design, people think, oh, it's going to be really difficult and I have to be good at maths. And yes. no, that's not true. You mm -hmm. know, it's it's it, it's it's a step by step approach. First, draw this line. Then you've made an intersection, which you need for the next step. Now draw this and you build up layers. And then ultimately you have all your your pencil lines and then you make the pattern appear. So it's. um it requires dedication, mm. you know, like anything. What I would love to know, like you've written, you've written quite a few books about it. Um, what, what would you say inspires you, and and how do you keep creative? Well, it's it's funny, you know. For me, Islamic geometric design has had different phases. So the first ten years, it was about teaching myself mm. and making lots of watercolor compositions, and then I started teaching other people, and then that turned into into books and also online tutorials and such. Anybody can pick up 
my, my, my first book, for example, Islamic Geometric Patterns, start with the first pattern, the easiest one, or the least difficult, if you will, and and then take it take it from there. So for me, that's very motivating, and that's also the reward that I have is that you know I'll get messages from people on social media sharing things that they've drawn using my book, you know, and as an author, you know, there's nothing better than that. So that that motivates me. I think where you are as well kind of helps with the creativity, right? You've got such a lovely environment. It does. It, it does. I mean, it's nice to travel and it's nice to go to to see Islamic geometric patterns or Islamic architecture, you know, in in situ. Mm. But for, for the practical day to day, it's um, it's good to have time to well to be reflective and to be creative. And and and, and certainly when I was writing my my, my latest book, you know, it, it, that's really what what you need. You know, to, mm. you, you need to have some. It's easy to clear your head when you're in the countryside. Basically, mm. you just certainly where, certainly where we are. I go for a walk. I see some sheep, I see some cows, mm. I see some fields, and I come back and I can start again. Mm. Now, on to another exciting bit, which is your new book, Islamic mm. Architecture, A World History. Please tell us all about it. Almost all Islamic art and architecture is just the Middle East and North Africa. You know, maybe a bit of Turkey, a bit of India, but, you know, if you didn't know better, you would think that's it. And I thought, if I'm going to write a book on Islamic architecture, I would want it to be a global book including Southeast Asia and including Sub-Saharan Africa and Latin America and 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 Europe and Russia, you know, all, all these countries, and make it go up to the 21st century. So I really wanted the freedom to choose buildings that are not well known, but fantastic, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, because it's, it, it really presents an opportunity to to show Islamic architecture in a, in a new way. Art books are funny uh, because, you know, I think... If you have a big a big coffee table book, I don't think people really read it. You know, nobody goes right chapter one. Let's go. You know, you look at the photos. If the photos are nice, you look. You read the captions. Mm -hmm. If the captions are interesting, you read the chapter. I think that's how it works. So I thought, well, I don't want a book where there's loads of text. I want a book where the photos are fantastic, hopefully, where the captions are interesting, and and also. These books are written for a global market, so not everybody has English as a first language. A lot of people like to consume information through images, not through words. So I thought, well, let, let me make a book that caters for that, you know, rather than do lots of words and a few photos. So that that, that was really it. So the challenge was to find, the challenge I gave myself is to really find the very, very, very best photos and, and to make the captions interesting. So... Not saying this building is this big and this high and this wide, mm. you know, it's a bit boring. Let me talk about who built it and in what circumstances and, you know, things yeah. that you remember, hopefully. Yes, no, absolutely. I must agree. Um, and, and earlier I said to you that my children read it. They're a lot younger, but they did yeah. enjoy it because it's very visual and the details, you can see the details. And I think that's what captured their attention because they're there it's as if they were there because it was the, the pictures were so vivid so this book like you said you know it's, it's like uh it's like your lockdown challenge isn't it it took nearly two years to gather the content and yeah. um how would you kind of like summarize like you know what the readers and your army of fans uh you know to expect from this brilliant book i i, I want to to present architecture in a way that people have not seen before mm -hmm. And 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 to defy expectations a little bit, and and to show that it's global, that it's a global history, um, and to show that it didn't stop being interesting in the 16th century. You know that even now, in or even that now in the 21st century, fantastic buildings are being built. So just to change, to change that perception a little bit. You know, and and the nice thing is that people are really excited when they see their own country in the book. Well. You know, you're happy to see the Philippines in there. So, you know, that's I was for really... me, that's really that's really nice, you know, to 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 really I wanted to be inclusive, you know, to to. And, and the amazing thing is really now, I mean, the book could only have been written now as, as opposed to, say, for example, five years ago, because mm. a lot of the photo or some of the photographs are taken by local photographers, mm. you know. So, for example, some photos of buildings in sub-Saharan Africa 
five years ago, it would have been impossible to get those photos. But now, because people can invest in a professional uh, camera, they can go to out of the way places in their own country, take great photos, upload them to a commercial photo agency. And when they do that, I can use them. So all of a sudden, these buildings that were undocumented for, well, forever, basically, yeah. in books anyway, um, no, now are on the pages of this of this book. And like, you know, speaking of which, um, this brings us to like the cover, the cover mm. of the book, which is super eye catching. You know, yeah. I, I actually do feel like doing this because I feel mm. like the door is right there in front of me. Um, can you tell us how you ended up choosing that cover? Well, I'll tell you what. So when you write books for a publisher like Thames and Hudson, who are, you know, a big commercial mm. art book publisher, as an author, there are two things about which you have no say. One is the title of the book and the other is the cover of the book. Right. Uh -huh. It's too important to leave it to the author, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I, I had found that photo. Most, so 80 percent, maybe 90 percent of my photos are from commercial photo agencies. But sometimes I was looking for a photo and I would look on Instagram if I couldn't find what I was looking for. And I came across this beautiful photo that's now on the cover. Two huge doors in Cairo, Mamluk era. I saw this photo. And whenever I see a really nice photo on Instagram, I send a little message to the account and basically say, look, please tell me you took this with a proper camera, <laughs> right? Rather than a photo, than a phone camera, because if it's a phone camera, we can't use it because the resolution wouldn't be good enough. So this lady, um, Fatma, Fatma Gamal in, uh, in Cairo, got back to me saying, yeah, no, I took it with a proper camera. So brilliant, right? It's, it's, it's such a great photo. It's such a great photo that... Um, now, the publisher tried different covers, uh, and ultimately they chose this one. And mm. you know, I couldn't be happier because it looks it looks great. Quite often with books on Islamic art and architecture, when India and Pakistan, you know, you get some some Mughal architecture, mm. but there is more than that, you know. And and it, and it's interesting to show that. And and the other thing that so in, for the Gulf region, mm, of yes. course, for the Gulf region, there's there's a there's a few modern buildings in there. But, for example, I found this fantastic mihrab in Oman. Mm. Just this beautiful plaster mihrab in, in, in a mosque there. For me, that was completely new. And I think, you know, the Gulf region, everybody goes on about the 21st century architecture. But, you know, there, there, there's more There's more than that. And, mm. and and that's true for many regions. You know, the, 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 the delight for me is finding these little gems that I think, wow, this is great. You know, not just a beautiful building, but... Oh, also an interesting story to tell. Every time I've written a book, every time I finish, I think I'm finished. <laughs> it's true. It's really true. You know, when I when I wrote my book on Islam, my first book, Islamic Geometric Patterns, I thought this is such a blessing, that such a privilege that I can write this book. That when I was finished, I was like a okay, us, You know, that's it. <laughs> Done. <laughs> and then something else came along, and then something else came along. And, and, and again, for any of us uh, watching um, online, your book is out now. Please tell us where we can get the book from. Well, in, the, in all good bookshops, uh, inshallah. Um, it, it, it's, some countries are a bit later, so it's out in the UK. I've seen customers in the US who have it. I've seen the first time it popped up in, in social media was from a bookshop in Jakarta in Indonesia. So it's slowly dripping into the market and it's coming out in German and in, in, in Italian editions as well, uh, end of September. Fantastic. Well, thank you once again, Eric, for your time and we'll hopefully see you soon.